everybody in with McGrew's Green Top Family Farms. Uh, we got a short video for you guys today. It's going to be on how to inspect and or replace wheel bearings. And my object that I'm going to be working on today is this grain cart that I bought the other day for about 400 bucks. The other thing too, if you're going to buy one of these, just a quick little caveat. I just installed this here piece of steel. If you look underneath here, they had had been rusted out down along here and what they had done is they had jammed road signs and license plates in there to seal that up so it didn't leave grain pay attention to that make sure they're not rusted out look in there there's a little bit of rotted grain in there that's a big red flag i didn't leave it but if you're getting ready to buy one of these make sure it ain't rusted out or you'll end up doing what i had to do you know it cost me about 30 bucks worth of steel and a couple hours of my time but it's better to just not have to do it at all but back to the task at hand. I already replaced that one. I had this one apart to repack the bearings and I determined that it was bad, but I'm gonna go through it again just to show you guys and give you an idea of what you're dealing with here. Uh, here are the races out of that front one that I just took apart. Yeah, that's not grease, that's not dirt, that is gouges. And if you run your fingernail along them, you can feel them. And what gave me pause when I was putting those back together is after I greased them, see even the outside ones like that. After I greased them, I put it together, it felt like a ratchet almost. It didn't turn smoothly. So we're gonna go through this and one take of course, but we'll go through this and I'll give you guys an idea what's going on here. Got my nice and safe handyman jack. We'll get this thing in the air and get the tire off. Always use caution when you're using a handyman jack. They are one of the more dangerous things out here on the farm. And there are countless stories Okay, now first things first, you're gonna need a couple of tools. Uh, all I need for this particular one, your experiences may vary, a hammer, you don't need to beat the hell out of it, a chisel, monkey wrench, and needle nose pliers or these. I carry these in my pocket, so that's what I got. First step here is you're gonna get this cover off. And actually I wanna turn the camera around here so the microphone is facing it. Listen to the sound as I turn this thing. That is not a good sound. You don't want to hear that in a bearing. Uh, it is properly torqued. I had it apart once already. But let's go ahead and get this thing apart and, so I can get it replaced. somewhere it's not going to get dirt and crap in it. Got the uh, cotter key here. Go ahead and get it bent out of the way. Small screwdriver helps too. Pull your 
powder key out, put it somewhere where it won't get dirty. That's your monkey wrench. Spindle nut. You would be surprised at how little torque is on these. It does not take that much torque. comes right off. This bearing's been repacked normally. They're not this pretty. The only reason this one is this pretty is because like I said I've had these off of here and I repacked them. After I determined that they're not any good is when I decided to order bearings. So I put it all back together so I could roll it around and get it out of my way. But uh, there's nothing necessarily on this bearing. I've already inspected it that looks bad to me. However, like I showed you on those races, when I put them back together the first time, it felt really crappy. So, go ahead and pull this hub off. I don't see anything in this, it looks terrible, but. I'm gonna go ahead and on here. With the chisel you should be able to knock the bearing and the seal out of this. This has a notch in it that makes it nice and easy. I won't be able to do it like that. I'll move the camera in. In through here. What I'm going to do the seal is pressed in and the bearing is pressed in. I'm going to use the bearing to knock the seal out without damaging it. Because I have to reuse the seal. I was not able to source new seals for this old obsolete wagon. You're going to alternate sides as you tap so that it comes out more or less evenly. See, come right out. Easy. Didn't tear the seal up. Go ahead and take that seal, put it off to the side somewhere where it's not going to get dirty. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this wheel hub and see maybe if we can figure out why exactly this one felt as bad as it did too. Wipe this bearing off. What I'm looking for here, as I wipe this off, is I'm going to turn these rollers over. Oh, see that right there? You can feel that with your fingernail. It's junk. So the bearing was bad. The bearing itself was bad. Go ahead and wipe the crap out of this. And see if we can't get a good look at the race itself. Oh yeah, terrible can't see it very well. I'll get it out of here, but yeah, it's that's definitely bad. So, to get this out, this hub has notches in it, specifically designed for this. Find them with my chisel so you can get in on the back side of this race. Tap it out gently. It's got one 180 degrees out on the other side. See, got it knocked about halfway out. I will go ahead and flip it up kind of sort of on its side so that I can get it the rest of the way out. Turn it over. Get on the other side. Stop knocking it over. God damn it. Okay, got that one out. Easy enough, right? Wipe this thing off and see what's wrong with it so I can show you. 
I did not have this this far apart last time, actually. Uh, I had it apart enough to retorque and pack them. But when I, like I said, when I put it back together and was feeling it as I turned it, I didn't like it. That is bad wear in that race. Absolutely junk. And what would have happened had I tried to run this wagon like this is I would have ended up on the side of the road probably and really more likely than anything is I'd end up with a, a flipped over grain wagon on the side of the road somewhere which is just what I need when that hub flew apart after I got it loaded. So let's get this other race out. Same process going the other way. Should come right out. See, easy enough. Uh, we'll go ahead and get these put back in. I cheat when I put them back in. Let me hold, get a new rag real quick. I cheat. Um, I put, I tap the races in there to start them and then I put the bearings in and I use the spindle nut to press the bearings the rest of the way into the housing so that I'm not beating on them too much. These are precision parts, so you shouldn't be beating on them any more than you have to. The outside race on this doesn't look terrible. And I noticed something here on them. The bearings are mismatched. And probably what happened is they thought that, you know, okay, hey, I'll slap some new bearings in this thing and keep it going for a while, which that's fine but they probably didn't bother to take the rear race out and they didn't bother to take the rear bearing out because it took a little bit more effort. Um, as you can see here, if you know what you're doing, it's not that big of a deal. But let's go ahead and get this race pushed back in. Have my new bearings here. Um, I do work for a bearing company. I did not buy their bearings. Um, because we produce quality stuff and that means that they're expensive but very gently with your chisel start this thing in here race is hardened so you don't need to worry about dinging it up but I wouldn't go crazy and get to uh, scratching the inside of there because you got to remember your rollers are going to be riding on this surface and any imperfections will shorten the life of that so be gentle and kind to these as you install them and no I am not working somewhere that is lab quality that means I need to clean things a lot and often Bearing selection is kind of a pain. You basically have to take the whole damn thing apart to figure out what bearings you even need in the first place. But that's the only way to do it. This old wagon, I tried to get online and find bearings for it. It wasn't possible. I had to take it apart and get the numbers off of the original bearings. They're usually somewhere on the outside here like this. Got your part numbers. Ooh, this one doesn't have a this one doesn't have a part number on here, but you can measure the ID, the thickness, and the OD of your bearing, and that will give you an idea of what the part number is on it. They are more or less universal. I'm not driving this bearing in all the way for the race. All I'm doing is getting it good and started so that I can come over here with my two bearings. Get that out of there. Grab the camera and bring it. Slip the bearing through here. Carefully slide it on, slide the front bearing in. I did 
started with the nut. Second. Let me pause it so you're not waiting. Found it. It was laying on the ground back there. It fell off. But uh, back to what we're doing. I'm right, going to carefully. This does not require a ton of torque. So you're going to put this on, hold it more or less where it goes, and give it a couple turns and rotate this thing as you're doing it because once they're seated this will get tight and it won't want to turn okay back your nut back off somewhere it's not going to fall off on the ground again. Take your bearing, put it somewhere clean that it's not going to get dirty. And your washer. This bearing will be kind of on here, kind of tight, because you used it to press them in. Just tap it off. Just a second, let me grab my grease gun. I'm going to, I'm going to show you how to pack a bearing the right way. Some people have the fancy bearing packers. We're not all that rich or fortunate. So I do have a fancy grease gun though. Okay, that should be plenty. Take your bearing. Now what you're doing is you're gonna take little slices of this grease here and push it in through the back of here. And what you're looking for is you'll start to see the grease come up through here. And you'll know that it's sufficiently packed uh, as you see that come out. Sometimes I pack it until I see it in there, then I flip it over and give it a couple on the other side just because it is kind of a pain. But here's the method. Okay, turn a little, scrape a little and push, scrape a little and push, scrape a little and push while rotating it. And after you've done it a few times, it's easy. You don't waste grease and it doesn't make a huge mess once you know how to do it. Forgive any loud noises or anything. Uh, the farmers the neighbors are harvesting their crops and loading grain and all that good stuff. Okay, you see how the grease has worked its way up through there? That one is sufficiently packed. Okay, now I have something else to deal with here. A seal, I have to reinstall this seal. So, got my bearing packed. Drop it down in there, good and greasy. Take my seal. This shouldn't be a difficult thing to tap back in. So, well, unless you drop it on the ground, then it's difficult, but. Light taps around the outside edges, working your way around. Install the hub. Grab your new small bearing. Oh, I set it up here. Go ahead and pack that bad boy too, because you're, well, actually, I'm going to fill in here with grease because it has a 
has a void in there for grease, so I'm going to fill it. Push it back on. Get some grease on my hand. Pack this bearing real quick. Yes, it is messy, but it is the way that it's been done for a long damn time, and it's necessary. After I get this bearing packed, I will show you how to torque a bearing down when you don't have a torque spec. There's not as much to it as you would think, and it's not as scary of a process as a lot of people. bearing, push it in, there's a spacer washer that come with it, wipe it off, put it on, Just let me clean my hands for a second. Okay, what you're going to be looking for here, similar to when you use this nut to press the uh, braces into the bearing, as you tighten it, rotate this, and as when it locks up, you're too tight. I've got a cotter key hole here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back this castle nut off to that next to the cotter key hole, the closest one to it, because that's your only option here. Take your cotter key, reinstall the cotter key, and you see that turns relatively freely. It's kind of snug, but it's not tight. Can't get it to go in. I'm kind of to nagle the nut around. Help it get in there. Tap it in, maybe. Bend the tab on your cotter key. Reinstall the dust cover. kind of a pain, but at least you don't have lugs to tear up. I'm in the wrong set of holes.
I always tighten at least one of them down because that kind of keeps it in place and makes it the others easier to get in. But of course, I always torque them with the impact. So, go ahead and get these bad boys torqued down. Carefully let your handyman jack down. That's all there is to it. You guys have a good day.